Hello friends, welcome to another presentation in ophthalmology by all our law team. Today we are going to talk about some of the anterior segment images. These anterior segment images will help you in making a definitive diagnosis just based on examination with the torchlight. Sometimes these can be kept in your exams either for undergraduate exams or for postgraduate exams. So let us try to see some of the images and uh, see what uh, we can learn from them. Okay, so you can see here, obviously this is uh, the limbus and uh, you see here there's some junction between a clear cornea and some opaque cornea. Basically this is a corneal graft, that is a full thickness corneal graft. This is the host cornea you can see some uh, new vessels and vascularization and corneal opacities and this is a clear cornea which is uh, the donor cornea and you can see all the sutures here which are non-absorbable sutures and the central cornea seems to be clear these corneal sutures are uh, not absorbable so these need to come out uh, at a later time. The main problem of leaving the corneal sutures longer is they can lead to corneal vascularization, corneal opacity and sometimes graft failure. These sutures can sometimes increase the risk of infection as well which can be a cause for graft failure. So what is this? You can see this is the pupillary margin and this is the limbus this is the root of the iris which is near the limbus you can see here the root of the iris is separated from the limbal area this is called as iridodialysis which basically means the separation of the iris from its root the underlying dark area is basically the ciliary body the most common reason for iridodialysis is uh, the trauma either due to blunt trauma or uh, due to penetrating injury or sometimes during the cataract surgery uh, we can induce iridodialysis. Whenever there is iridodialysis there is always uh, a risk of uh, complications happening like glaucoma. This is a very different uh, eye. You see the color of the iris is not uniform. Uh, there is a hypopigmentation of the iris here uh, which is light brown in color and the central area is a little bit more darkly pigmented that is dark brown in color this is called as heterochromia iridium that is hetero means different chromia means color so basically the color of the iris looks different in the same eye immature cataract you can see the gray reflex of the cataract in the pupillary area so this is immature cataract patient will be able to still see the vision may be blurred if it is a white reflex that is uh, it's looking totally white like milk then uh, it is a white cataract or mature cataract neither you will be able to see the back of the eye nor the patient will be able to see anything out of it and remember whenever there is white cataract the pupil will still be reactive and uh, there will be perception of light unless there is optic atrophy Here you can see the iris and uh, this is an intraocular lens that is this patient had a cataract surgery done. You can see here the iris in this part is missing. The possibility is that this is an iris coloboma where the iris is uh, absent in this area. And the other possibility sometimes trauma can cause uh, a defect in the iris tissue like aridectomy but this is inferior so it's more of a congenital iris coloboma. In this image you can see some lines radiating uh, from the limbus going towards the central area these are called as uh, uh, radiotomy, uh, radial keratotomy scars. This is one of the previously used method of doing uh, refractive surgery where you put a keratotomy uh, incisions 
and this will help to flatten the cornea and change the corneal curvature nowadays this is not done nowadays most commonly used are uh, laser refractive surgeries like lasik lasik smile and so on here you can see some nodular elevation at the limbus with no surrounding blood vessels or congestion or inflammation there are no signs of inflammation this is basically a limbal dermoid which is congenital and again uh, this needs excision only when it is affecting vision or causing problems this picture shows uh, blood vessels on the cornea and the cornea looks totally opaque you can't differentiate the cornea and the limbus blood vessels from limbus grow onto the cornea and leads to vascularized corneal opacity whenever there is a vascular corneal opacity the prognosis is very poor patient can't see anything and uh, there is no indication for doing a corneal graft as well because there is a very high risk of failure of the graft because of the advanced vascularization this can happen after the trauma or scarring from the infections or healed corneal ulcers you can see here in the pupillary area some black uh, discoloration this is a uh, basically a ciliary body moss this is not a very common thing that you come across but uh, this has got a very high mortality if not picked up and treated it's just a cancer of the ciliary body one of the stain that is very commonly used in ophthalmology is the fluorescein stain this is the fluorescein staining of the cornea you can see some fluorescein uptake there which is basically either a corneal epithelial defect or a corneal ulcer where there is a defect in the corneal epithelium and that is taking up the stain this is an image of pterygium we do have a presentation on pterygium please go through it uh, fibrovascular proliferation starting from the conjunctiva in the periphery which uh, is encroaching upon the cornea uh, this can cause astigmatism causing blurring of vision or this can come into the pupillary area and this can affect the quality of the vision of the patients this is just the same pterygium that you see if you ask the patient to look uh, away from the opacity the definitive treatment for it is uh, excision of the pterygium once again thanks a lot for your uh, time and patience with us with this presentation please do feel free to comment and give your feedbacks we always believe in sharing our knowledge with you with the aim of benefit for the whole humanity once again thanks a lot from all and law team